Hi, folks. Uh, so for today's Fastly Altitude 2020, I'm going to be talking about magic tricks with Docker or, or how to monitor Fastly in about five minutes. So ideally, coming out of this, you're going to get a magic trick that you can then perform for your coworkers or for your management where you can also look like a magician. I am unlike most magicians where they say they never show you all of their secrets. I'm going to show you most, not all, most of my secrets. So let's start with the very simple components here. Um, so we're going to have an ordinary Docker instance. Um, we're going to have an ordinary uh, uh, sprinkled with a little Docker Compose. A Fastly API token? No, I am not going to show you mine. Uh, I'm sure everyone who's looking at this particular presentation is capable of getting access to their own. That's actually part of the part of the reason for this presentation. Uh, we're going to take an ordinary Git repository. Very very simple. We're going to go ahead and clone that guy. And we're going to go into it, and then and then very importantly. Very importantly, we need to show you that there's nothing up my sleeve. So, all right. So, eh, away they go. All right. Okay. So, I have no Docker system images. So there is nothing up my sleeve. Now, I'm going to tell you that there's nothing up my other sleeve. I'm going to show you that I have no Docker volumes. Uh, a magician never reveals all of their secrets. So in this case, um, what I want to make very clear is, in the words of a fellow magician, um, we are going to show you real grains of sand from a real beach. We are actually going to show you a randomized subset of production data from Ticketmaster's utilization of Fastly. However, they are grains of sand. You, you can't actually use them to infer anything about our overall business components. They're really just here to demonstrate a small amount of live traffic running through, uh, running through what you're about to see. All right. And now we need to go ahead and say some magic words. So what we're actually spinning up here with Docker Compose is we're spinning up a full stack that includes uh, Peter Morgan's fantastic Fastly exporter, which re reads from rt.fastly.com, so the Fastly real-time data spigot, basically. Uh, we also spin up uh, Prometheus and Grafana with a, for a full stack here. Um, so this is the going to take the largest chunk of time for the presentation, uh, but I think we're ready to to start taking a look at something. All right. 
Now we are we are waiting very very patiently for our data to actually actually populate here. I always wait with bated breath whenever I'm doing this as a demo because I'm like, oh, I really hope my data shows up. And yet, and yet here we are. Okay, so, ta-da! It's it's well, it's it's honestly it's not a very good version of. Uh, re-implementation of the the stock Fastly UI as visible through through Fastly's uh, managed.fastly.com. Um, so yeah, that's, that's not a real great magic trick. But what if we actually did something a little better here? Um, all right. So instead of just attempting to re-implement, what if we said, okay, we want a better service page? So in this particular instance, um, this is this allows you to select by service names, which I'm not going to show you. It allows you to select by service IDs. Uh, it also allows you to select by data centers. Now, there are a couple of, of interesting components that come out of this. So the first thing is, at a glance, there are encoded thresholds for these. Now, these may not be your thresholds, but at least it allows you to start with either if you're new to these dashboards or if you're looking at these dashboards at a glance, or if you simply want to take these dashboards as a starting point and adjust these thresholds as appropriate for your organization. Now, the other component I'm going to go ahead and highlight is this is actually aggregating services right now. So we're in service name, all service ID, all data center, all. So this is actually an aggregate um, of all of the services that are available in this particular randomized, anonymized subset. Now, this is this is where the Fastly tool, tool chain doesn't currently extend. They're really good about providing statistics for individual services, but if you want to start looking at your account as a whole, um, it starts to get a little more complicated. Now, in particular, there are a couple of components that come through via the uh, the Prometheus feed. So um, these have been anonymized, but you actually get the service name and service ID here populated. Now, in addition to that, those are actually going to be links. To the appropriate configuration. For that particular service. Uh, so you can actually link directly back into the past the UI for for what you're looking at. Now, additionally, we're also um, we're also tracking a couple of components that that may be less familiar. So we have um, how much of the response uh, the request and response header space available are we actually using. Uh, one of the uh, one of the gnarly bits is if you if you're sending re requests or response headers that are too big, they'll actually break the proxying pipeline, and you'll have a very sad service. Uh, so this is a good extra metric to keep in mind when you have weird breakages. Uh, additionally, um, we are actually toggling whether or not shielding is currently in use and how much of it is going to shielding. This is actually a really important one to check out because it is shielding is. Is is configuration that where it's very easy to actually accidentally break it because of how you've implemented your VCL. Um, so this has actually been the source of, of a number of surprises where we've had services where they've they've had shielding configured and our expectation is shielding is working, but when we actually look at whether or not shielding is is actually functioning and how much is actually going to to our shields, uh, it's not actually working because we've we've bypassed it too early. Uh, so we'll also show you the breakdown of traffic to the various shields involved. Uh, in this case, again, because we're looking at aggregate, you're going to see the breakdown of shielding across all of sort of the, the randomized aggregate that we're looking at. This is the Fastly Top Services, and this actually provides a really useful viewpoint that's not currently um, uh, uh, available through the fast the UI, and that's I want to look at my account as a whole, and I want to understand which services are receiving the top requests, which services are receiving the top bandwidth errors, etc. Um, so we actually make extensive use of embedded uh, top K variables uh, that are pre-generated uh, on page load, 
and then so so that we can actually directly show top tens for each. So this is the top ten for requests and the top ten for bandwidth and the top ten for errors. Um, so this makes it really easy at a glance to say, hey, which one of my services uh, may be misperforming? Where am I seeing the, more, the most 5xxs? Or if you want to go ahead and say, hey, where am I seeing the, the largest long tail for latency, for P99 latency, uh, and potentially the, uh, the lowest hanging fruit for somewhere where I can do a performance improvement? Now we can you can uh, slice and dice these things by service name, service ID, uh, and data center. Now, additionally, there's there's a bit of a trick that you can go ahead and perform here, and I'm just going to go ahead. So when you're doing a an event, uh, so for us it would be an on sale, it would be a, a ticketing event or a deployment or whatever. Frequently, you don't care about uh, all of these services for for your particular account. And I I know I'm selecting a whole bunch here, but not all of these are actively serving traffic right now. Um, but let's say you have seven services. Let's try that, and you're only interested in those seven services, and you want to know for those seven services, how are the quests doing? How is the origin latency doing? How are the errors doing? And this is because you're, rather than looking at individual services one at a time, this lets you say, hey, I'm gonna focus on a couple of services uh, for, for my deployment, for my debugging, for my whatever, and I can get a decent top level view for all of those at the same time on a singular dashboard. Uh, now this is also particularly useful in that the link that's generated here that's actually produced as part of Grafana is fully formed with all of the variables in place for, for the services that you've selected. So you can actually cut and paste that and send that to people and be like, hey, here is our ad hoc uh, top level dashboard for the the one, two, or 14 services that we're in the process of doing some work on. Now, in addition to embedded in these guys, we also have for individual services. So you can actually link to the service dashboard for the associated services, which is the dashboard we were looking at previously. And you can also link to the Fastly configuration, which again, we've, we've sort of already shown you. So this is the Fastly top data center view. So this is really sort of the companion piece to the Fastly top services. Uh, again, if you want to get a clear picture of how the various Fastly data centers are being used across the entirety of your account. Um, so again, we can go ahead and sort by service name. Um, we can uh, not just sort, but select service ID. We can select by, by data center, et cetera. Uh, this is particularly good if you want to go ahead and say, hey, where, what data centers am I primarily using? Um, am, I, am I seeing any, any spikes of errors um, associated with particular data centers? Am I seeing any any spikes of latency. Now, again, there's nuances there because just because you're seeing a spike in latency or a spike in errors doesn't necessarily mean that there's a problem with the Fastly data center. In many cases, it means that there's there's a concentration of services that flow over that data point um, that are potentially um, having problems. Uh, but it's a good way to be able to narrow it down and sort of drill down into that. Now, additionally, when you go ahead and select on any of these data sources, uh, we have some canned links in here. So we have the Fastly top services dashboard by data center, which I'm going to go ahead and open in a separate window, and the Fastly service dashboard by data center. And we'll go ahead and talk about those in just one second. So this is a link coming back into the Fastly top services, which we saw previously. But in this case, we're focused entirely around everything that's going through the MIA data center. Uh, so this is going to show you the top requests, but only the top requests for data that is flowing over the MIA data center. So it's a really good way to be able to narrow down, drill down into a given data center uh, and get a clearer picture of what's going on. All right, so hopefully with a, a peek behind the curtain, uh, y'all have uh, managed to uh, to get a better understanding of how all of this lays out. And I'm sure for your larger organizations, you may already have something that is similar or different, or it may even be better, in which case, hit me up, I'll, I'll take patches. 
Um, but hopefully the, the dashboard layouts themselves will give you some food for thought or some ideas for where you would like to go or some additions to your components. Uh, for potentially for the, the smaller Fastly customers, you may well have an opportunity right here to turn around and demonstrate to your management and coworkers exactly what kind of magician you happen to be. And if so, well, I hope you give an excellent performance. Thank you.